Thank you for staying tuned. The program is Good Morning Nigeria. If you just joined us, we are right in time for the first part of our discussion, taking a look at breast cancer management and what you have as attendant issues alongside. Now, over the years, cancer treatment has become difficult in view of the colossal amounts needed to manage. It, tends, it is viewed by many as a death sentence. Well, you're right, mm -hmm. Blessing. Uh, that's because uh, treatment centers for cancer are pretty few in the country. And uh, it is usually, in terms of cost, out of the reach of many patients. And some of them do not, as a result, present themselves even for diagnosis. Well, however, nowadays, efforts are being made to reduce such burden as uh, uh, experts are evolving over time with new, with new trains to actually manage cancer, especially that's of the breast, with a view to changing the narrative from being a death sentence or uh, disease. All right, uh, we have two guests with us in the studios uh, to discuss this further. Uh, first, at this time, we would like to uh, welcome Dr. B.C. Ademuywa. Dr. B.C. Ademuywa is a breast medical oncologist, and she's also an associate professor in the Division of Oncology, Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Dr. Ademo Yewa, pleasure to have you with us. Pleasure to be here. Good morning. All right. Mm -hmm. Also here with us uh, is Dr. Chris Otabo. He is uh, CEO Alliance Hospital right here in Abuja. Dr. Otabo, pleasure to have you with us on the program. Thank you for having mm -hmm. me. Okay. All right. Uh, bless you. Let's, mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's begin with uh, Dr. Uh, Ademo Yewa. Again, with on uh, a number of occasions taking on medical issues on this program, one of such issues being cancer. Uh, but today we are focusing on, on breast cancer. What makes breast cancer unique and what is it all about? So what makes breast cancer unique is actually that, you know, unfortunately a lot of people in low to middle income countries present at a later stage when it's not able to be cured, particularly when it has spread outside of the breast. And the good thing is about breast cancer is that if you are screened or if the breast cancer is detected early, it's completely curable with proper treatments. When, when you say that the breast cancer or the cancer cells would have spread to other parts of the body, that, that's part of what I would like you to explain, you know, especially to uh, our audience you know, who do not have deeper understanding of, of medical issues. How does breast cancer occur? So breast cancer is a cancer that basically starts in the breast. In terms of cancers, we don't really know why cancers develop, but what we think is that there's an insult to genetic material in our bodies, and that insult could be acquired, such as a gene that is transferred from a parent, or sorry, inherited, or the insult could be acquired, such as through lifestyle changes, obesity, alcohol, taking estrogens, or through aging. But what actually tips one to develop cancer is unknown. But breast cancer is when the cancer starts in the breast. And when you have a cancer that is left untreated, it eventually grows and then spreads to other parts of the body. And then that's when it kills. I, I'm wondering, Blessing, uh, mm. I'd like Dr. Tabo to also uh, chip in here. When you say the cancer cells have spread to other parts of the body, what is it, if you like, the traveling mechanism? for the spread of, of the cancer cells to other parts of the body. Okay, thank you very much. Um, cancer spread by many means. It can spread by local invasion. The, 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 the word cancer is gotten from the word that, that uh, suggests a crab-like structure. So it's, it has tentacles. So there can be local spread, okay, which may spread to contiguous tissues. Then it could it could break, part of these cancer cells can, uh, could break and fall into the blood vessel and then the blood vessel takes it around to far distant places. Then it could also spread through the lymphatics. There are different vessels in the body. The, the lymphatics, they are the, these um, uh, vessels that mop up excess fluids from our bodies and, and recycle them. So some cancer also spread by lymphatics. So, um, because of this, a cancer that, that occurred primarily in the breast can find itself in the, in the liver. Uh, we say there has been a distant spread, a metastatic spread, and brain or any other part through some of these means that I have mentioned. What? What? Sorry, bless you. Okay. I mean, I just had to ask you, I'll give you some opportunity, you know, to, to come in. 
Why is it that cancer patients often experience severe pain? Well, cancer patients experience severe pain really depending on the site of the cancer. Particularly, for instance, if we take breast cancer as a case study, breast cancer usually is completely painless because there are a limited number of nerves in the, in the breast. Mm. But when cancer spreads to areas that are high in innervation, such as the liver or the bones, then that's when it spreads and expands and spreads on the ca and stretches the capsule or impinges on a nerve. That's when pain starts. But for instance, if there's a small cancer in the breast, it's usually painless. So it really depends on where it is. All right. Uh, uh uh, bo anyway, both of you now could still pick up uh, uh, this uh, answer. You, while you were talking earlier, you said um, the thing that tips of cancer is still relatively unknown. Correct. But really, not, not, let, let's break it down. Who is at risk, really? Because if we're talking about breast now, the average mind is okay, maybe it's just for the females. Of course, men might not uh, have such extended uh, protrusion from their chest like that. So, who is at risk and at what stage? So, the simple answer is that everyone really is at risk. Breast cancer is extremely common. It happens in about one out of every eight women. And in, for men, it's very rare, but still can happen. It's about one in a thousand men will be affected with breast cancer. So what are the risk factors for breast cancer? The commonest risk factor for breast cancer, of course, is being female. And then age. The median age of breast cancer is about 62. So as a woman grows older, her risk increases. There are other risk factors, such as starting your periods very early in life. Um, less than 11 or going through the change of life menopause later on o over the age of 55 if a woman takes hormone replacement therapy to combat the symptoms of menopause that's also a very strong risk factor for breast cancer there are also some inherited genes that can be passed on from one's parents such as the BRCA1 or 2 gene that also increase the risk of breast cancer um, there are things like if somebody has had radiation to the chest as a child for some different different conditions that could be a risk factor as well obesity is a risk factor um, alcohol is a risk factor as well uh, so there are several different risk factors for breast cancer okay i'm, I, I'm sure at, because you back there in the united states something was as pro uh, prompted you're coming into the country to actually take a look at what is happening Let, let's find out dr tabo really how alarming is the incidents we have here in Nigeria on the issue of breast cancer. Okay. Thank you very much. I think I, I'll start from the earlier comments you mm. made, and that's actually why we're here. Mm. Um, <coughs> Dr. BC is listed on Forbes magazine as the number one breast cancer oncologist in the United States. And um, I came across that information December last year when I was on holiday in the U.S. And I decided that uh, and I also f uh, found out that she was visiting Nigeria for her mom's 70th birthday. Mm -hmm. So I d we, d we decided to organize a program around her coming. And so yesterday we had a dinner with doctors that treat cancers. And it was beautiful. She did a presentation to you know, the group. And today we're having a public lecture for, all the, women, for, the, for the public women for her to talk to them about breast cancer and preventive measures and things that they can do, simple things. Okay, and then <coughs> later on today by 1 p.m. from 1, there's a free uh, consultation for breast cancer patients at Alliance Hospital. Mm. So that's just the, the program that we organize around her, you know, just to create that interface. Uh, and tap into Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then you never can tell. The cost is a factor for breast cancer treatment. And over there in the U.S., there are a lot of foundations, a lot of opportunities to get free access to, uh, you know, help. And you never can tell. She might just be that door mm -hmm. that could be open to, to the poor indigent city, uh, 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 cancer patients in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how alarming, like I've answered yeah, long time, yes. the question. In terms of mm -hmm. statistics, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have very good statistics in Nigeria. But I can tell you that women are dying every day from breast cancer in this country it is very alarming unfortunately over 90 percent of the cases of breast cancer that present to us as doctors are they come in in the late stage even among educated people okay so there's really not much you can do it's only when it's gone so 
out of hand, you know, stage three, stage four, that's when they come. And that's why some of the uh, fallout from her, con her conversation last night is very instructive. Clinical breast examination, self-breast examination, those are basic things that doesn't cost anything to do and it can save thousands of lives. About 75,000 people die of, of cancers generally in this country every year. Mm. Okay, let's I, I'm wondering, yeah, mm, just okay. before, uh, I don't know how much mm. of Nigeria's medical history you have, uh, the occurrence of breast cancer, is it a recent uh, is it a recent uh, uh, occurrence? Uh, let, let me ask, let me put it that way. Or has breast cancer always been there? In other words, I mean, for our mothers and our grandmothers, did we always have or hear stories of women dying of breast cancer? Well, you know, traditionally, cancers have sort of been a taboo and they've been hidden in in people in our communities. So I think there's a, probably a little bit more awareness about cancers in general. So we're hearing more about it. The incidence of cancer in general in low to middle income countries is increasing as we take on the habits of the more developed world. We now bear majority of the share of the worldwide burden. So cancer incidence is increasing in Nigeria. But having said that, it was present in the past. It's not a new thing. But I believe that there's a little bit more awareness, and so we're actually hearing a little bit more about the statistics. Uh, Dr. Otaba, what's your take on this? I mean, yeah, the, the, you know, before now, many years ago, a woman could have breast cancer and die, and the diagnosis is not made because they attributed it to witchcraft okay. and so on and so forth. So with increasing knowledge, with increasing awareness, you, because you can't find what you are not looking for. You can't see it. It's only when you are looking for something that you can see it. So, and then coupled with the fact that we are westernizing in terms of our diet, so w the incidence is increasing, but the awareness is also increasing. And this is good because it also helps us to pick the cancers early and treat them early. That's why you are hearing so much noise about breast cancer compared to like 30 years ago. Mm. Okay, let's get back to uh, Dr. Ademuiwa. Well, you, uh, you've talked about issue of diet, you've talked about issue of lifestyle that is actually been at the forefront. Now, what, ba what, what basic um, things should people look out for, especially to females now, because you said at least it's more on the females that, than you have for men. What are those signs you should look out for before you start presenting yourself mm -hmm. early? So what we recommend in general is uh, breast self-awareness. So every woman should really know how her breasts look and feel. And what we recommend is that you check your breast once a month. You choose the, about the same time every month, either the first of the, of the month or the last day of the month. Look at your breasts, just feel around so that you know how they feel, so that if there's a change, you can present to medical attention. And the changes you would be looking for, you would be looking for a lump in the breast or in the armpit that wasn't there before. You would be looking for skin changes, either redness, a rash or dimpling of the skin or nipple discharge, particularly if you're not breastfeeding or there could be nipple crusting. These are some of the things that should really, you know, um, pick your attention and have you present to medical care. Mm -hmm. And so if you do that once a month, you would have a good understanding of what your body is like. And if there's a change, then you can, you know, let somebody know so that you can be further evaluated. Okay, what about diet? We've talked about diets. What kind of diet has been pushing people to, mm -hmm. to go on this lane? So there's not really any specific diet that we recommend to prevent breast cancer, but we do recommend that you maintain a healthy weight, avoiding obesity, avoiding alcohol, being physically active, and maintaining a good weight throughout your life. Obesity, alcohol are strong risk factors for breast cancer. So, you know, everybody knows what to eat. Less uh, refined sugars, less carbohydrates, more fruits and vegetables in general are you know, usually recommended for healthy living. From the word go or from a particular age? From the word go. Hmm. Uh, all right, uh, Dr. Otabo, it, it is often said that every human being has a cancer cell or has cells that uh, could become cancerous, but that some of the guys, cancer cells are actually benign, you know, while uh, others uh, become, of course, uh, ravaging in, in their impact. How true is this? 
Okay, well, not not exactly so. But let me explain. Um, <coughs> we are all made of cells, and the cells divide every time. That's how we renew ourselves. Okay, something can go wrong with the division process, and then a, a line of cells can lose the normal control and then begins to divide beyond proportion. And that is when we say uh, a tumor has arisen. Okay, the tumor can be benign or it could be malignant. If it is benign, it is f friendly, it's body friendly. W the only problem you have is probably this, the stretch of the tissue and the pressure effect. Mm. Okay, but when, if it is cancerous, that's the one that is mostly at, uh, uh, risky to the individual because it continues to divide, it continues to spread, it continues to compete with the normal body tissue for nutrients. It it's, uh, produces chemicals that are injurious to itself. So the aim of cancer is actually to finally eliminate the individual. So I don't know if I've explained that. Normal cells uh, lose their normal control mechanism for growth and division and then they begin to grow out of proportion and then it could be benign which is not so terrible depending on the location then it could be cancerous when it's cancerous then the tendency to spread is there and is that spread that makes it more dangerous because it goes to the liver it knocks off the liver you know by producing chemicals by competing with the liver for space for nutrients you know, and they grow faster than normal tissue. So the tendency is for them to take the, the nutrients from the normal tissues and so on and so forth. Pressure effect, you know, they can block blood vessels, they can, block, they can put pressure on vital structures. In the brain, if it's there in the brain, it's an enclosed space. And if the cancer cell keeps spreading, it puts pressure on the brain, it can lead to unconsciousness and also death. Mm. If it's in the intestine, it blocks the intestine, it causes intestinal mm. obstruction, you know, so many things like that. Okay, let's like explore further with a uh, doctor. Uh, there are new trends. Uh, there are new interventions in the management. Uh, well, I know over time, your peers from here to exchange knowledge here and there. Let's find out what is new in the management of breast cancer today. What kind of th therapy would sufferers around the world or around here can benefit from? So there are three main modalities we use to treat breast cancer. So there's uh, surgery, there's radiation therapy, and then systemic therapy. And all three modalities have advances. For instance, in surgery now, we've um, reduced the kind of surgery we're administering to women. So instead of the radifi uh, radical modified mastectomy, which was being done several decades ago, which takes off the whole breast yes. and the muscles, which is very disfiguring, we're now doing lumpectomies, which is just removing the tumor. Um, and so a woman is able to preserve her breast. Though that's one of the advances in surgical techniques. In terms of radiation, instead of radiating the whole breast and the whole chest wall and causing a lot of burning, the radiation now has become quite focused. And instead of the long usual duration of about six and a half weeks of radiation, the radiation has now been shortened for women who are eligible. Some are getting radiation just over three weeks and there are even clinical trials to determine if uh, one fraction for just one day would also be um, sufficient for women. In terms of systemic therapy, there are new chemotherapies that we use, which are much, much less toxic than the chemotherapies we were using several decades ago. We have a lot of supportive care techniques to prevent um, side effects from chemotherapy, such as nausea, vomiting. We can control those very well. The duration of um, hormonal therapy has now been extended to 10 years rather than five years for women who are particularly at high risk of having disease recurrence. So all these modalities have increased the survival of patients with early stage breast cancers. Mm. Uh, how mm. affordable uh, are these okay. new uh, forms of management? Well, some of them are extremely um, expensive. Mm -hmm. And in general, in developed countries, there's you know mechanism of um, insurance, which health insurance, which pays for individuals' um, health care needs. Uh, some of them are cheap. For instance, there's a drug which is you know many many decades old. It's extremely powerful. 
in preventing breast cancer recurrence. It's called tamoxifen. It's widely available all over the world and it's extremely cheap. So newer techniques, yes, some of them are very expensive, but there's still older techniques that are extremely affordable for all women all over the world. Well, what story do we have here, Dr. Exactly. Tabo, with regard to uh, either the application of the uh, older or newer techniques? Um, <coughs> the uh, cost is a problem for us in Nigeria and most of the developing world. Um, most of, of Nigerian women uh, we pay out of pocket and because the insurance system here is weak uh, we have less than 6% insurance coverage for Nigeria and of that uh, percent uh, only few people will have breast cancer covered under insurance. Hmm. So even for those who have insurance, breast cancers are not covered. covered. So at the end of the day you have people paying from their pockets and um, though it's far more costly in the US. On the average in the US you could spend in the neighborhood of seven hundred and something thousand dollars to manage breast cancer but here it's not as expensive because the manufacturing companies the the I think I don't know how they do it but we get drugs cheaper here than over there but that's not to say that um, it will not cost an arm and a, 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 and a leg. leg to treat yeah. breast cancer here and the, the funds are just not there there are a lot of patients who require such treatments and they are still carrying, moving around with their breast cancer body. So it's, it's quite a problem and it's a public health problem. What, what are the clinical manifestations of breast cancer? I mean, if you say a woman has breast cancer, what does she begin to, uh, to feel? So it really depends on the stage she's at. So for instance, there, there are four stages of invasive breast cancer. Stage one is when there's a small lump, less than about two centimeters in the breast. She may feel that or she may not feel that. That may be something that is picked up on routine screening mammogram. Stage two is when it's a little bit bigger and perhaps has spread to the um, armpits. And in that situation, she may feel something, a lump. And then stage three, the cancer is bigger. So in general, changes could, there could be absolutely no symptoms or a woman could feel a lump in the breast or the armpit there could be swelling of the breast there could be redness the breast could look like an orange peel and sort of mimic an infection if a woman has systemic symptoms such as chest pain cough shortness of breath a new bone pain pain in the right upper quadrant which may suggest that there's involvement of the liver or headaches you know dizziness nausea vomiting these systemic symptoms may, may indicate that there has been distant spread and metastatic disease. So it really depends on the stage of presentation. If you take that again, for the benefit of our, of our yeah. viewers, uh, you, you talked about vomiting, you talked about chest pain, and uh, pain in the, uh, in the tussle area. Just, mm. just explain that for the benefit of our viewers. If you're a woman, what should you look out for? Mm. So first of all, you should be examining your breasts, looking to see if there's a breast lump or if there are any skin or nipple changes on the breast that were not there before, if there's anything new in the armpits, uh, particularly a lump, or if there's a new nodule, a little bump on the breast, on the skin, or anything like that. And then, of course, you should always be aware of you know, what your health is. For instance, if breast cancer spreads, there are some organs that it likes to spread to the lungs, so in that situation, one would be worried about a persistent cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, not the usual cold that we always have, you know, every now and then, but a breast cancer symptom that is not treated is usually persistent and progressive. If it goes to the bone, there would be a new unusual uh, pain in an area of the bone, not the usual arthritis that we always have, but something that is worsening. Um, if it goes to the brain, there could be nausea, vomiting, there could be a headache that wakes you up early in the morning, um, there could be sort of loss of balance, of balance or weakness in an extremity or one side of the body, symptoms of a stroke. If they're spread to the liver, which breast cancer also likes to go to, there could be pain in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, um, which wasn't there before, nausea, vomiting, unintentional weight loss. These are some of the signs of you know distant spread of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Mm. Otabo, I, I'm sure you must have seen this uh, in some cities, particularly big cities like Lagos, 
uh, you, you find you know some women you know who are begging on the street mm. uh, bare-breasted and you find it, I have been mean, so all over the breast yeah. even though a few fake ones have been picked up they use uh, tomato paste or so on, on their on their breast but I, 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 this is a kind of science that uh, also would show that perhaps this is a breast cancer patient yeah when you have a fungating mass mm. with ulcer that's a stage four cancer that's that's like the terminal uh, within a month uh, within a year that's that person may be um, may be gone if nothing is done that that's an example but it's not only breast cancer that can do that there are some infections that can do that too tuberculosis can present like that mm -hmm. but if a woman by, by the time a woman uh, who has breast cancer now has ulceration or discharging from sores, yeah. or sores yeah. then you know that that's already a stage four disease but even going around like that in the streets on the road yeah, uh, they're not risky that's going not to other, other she's at around. risk to herself and it's not good for the society but there's something else i want to mention mm -hmm. a lot of uh, nigerian women when they notice something strange in their breast or some uh, or a, a mass they they go for alternative treatment and they read a lot of all this stuff on the internet and it's not doing them any good they go for hydro treatment heat treatment was herbal treatments and all that at the end of the day they, they, they lose the best time to actually arrest the problem by the time those things fail and they are coming back it's already an advanced disease yeah. I'm wondering, now that you are right on that, I actually yeah. was going to raise this yeah. so alternative, uh, alternative treatment, or if you like, alternative medicine. Two of the most popular that have been circulating, blessed, I'm sure you yeah. must have also received that on social media. One, is some doctor is being referred, I don't know whether in India or somewhere in the US, says, look, uh, cancer and uh, cancer treatment, uh, this, you have some conspiracy involving the pharmaceutical companies and all of that. that what you should do is avoid sugar. Refined that cancer, sugar. Yeah, cancer mm. cells feed on sugar. So eliminate sugar from your diet and then you kill off the cancer cells. That's one. Let's get your comment on that. Well, you know, sugar, refined sugar is really not good for anything. And um, all cells in the body, cancerous cells and normal cells, feed on sugar, feed on glucose. Eliminating glucose is not helpful in treating any cancer at all. That's a complete old wives' tale. You know, cancer that is in there's no clinical studies that have shown that arresting or eliminating sugar completely will re lead to a reduction in the incidence or improvements in clinical outcomes from breast or any other cancer. So that's completely false. But of course, sugar really is not good for anything. What about the talk about the alternative uh, no, just, uh, I would like mm -hmm. Dr. Tabo to also speak on the sugar stuff. I don't know whether you have received it in social media. It says <laughs> cut off sugar, you know, kill the sugar business. Uh, to start with, we cannot cut off sugar because the, uh, well, there are different types of sugar, refined sugar, but really we exist on sugar. Because uh, most things that we, we eat will sugar end up base. as sugar. Because it, we need it. The body needs it for energy. It's the glucose that is broken down into uh, ATP that we survive on. We cannot. But uh, excess sugar is not good. Okay? But the, the issue of eliminating sugar and you, you, you wipe out cancer, that's, <laughs> that's a false. There's no study that has shown that and there is no practical results that have proven that this, this, the this is one, true. The other one, the other one, I don't know whether this one is a grandmother's tale, you said <laughs> old <laughs> wife's tale, uh, Dr. Demo Iwa, mm -hmm. is, in addition to cutting off sugar, which we have uh, already addressed, is get lemon, a large lemon and hot water, you know, juice it, drink it for about a month or so. I don't know what the, what the size of the cup is, probably like what we use for good morning in Nigeria here. Drink it repeatedly and it is farewell to cancer. Yeah. Your thoughts? I think this is an, a grandfather's tale. <laughs> <laughs> in that situation, people are trying to do what we call alkan alkalinize the, yeah, the uh, <laughs> microenvironment of the body. And again, that really hasn't been proven in any clinical trials 
or you know any studies to improve um, patients outcome from cancers so you know that's false no but is it that yeah. uh, lemon is has no use for the body i mean let's face it you talked about taking fruits a moment ago and lemon is one of the commonly available fruits for us here in the tropics well it's good for health it's good for health you know all fruits are good for health but in terms of specifically eliminating cancers you know i don't have any data to back that up well we're uh, still uh, still on the question for for most who want to go the alternative uh, medicine way mm -hmm. w w what do you advise you know what we advise is that there's um there's really a window in terms of when one can be cured with with any cancer that is curable and that's when it's at the early stage essentially cancer that is left untreated will grow will spread and ultimately will kill so if you have a window of opportunity and you seek non-traditional you know medications or uh, therapies and you lose that window it may be too late i mean cancer can still be managed at stage four but it cannot be cured so i would advise people to seek proper medical treatment if they have a cancer and you know i advise my patients if they insist on doing non-traditional therapies i say do the traditional therapy first once you're cured you can always go back to the non-traditional therapies you know if you must Mm. Uh, uh, all right, uh, you know, thank you very much. We will uh, uh, like to get uh, reactions now from our viewers. We already have them actually by way of uh, tweets that have come in. We will take those tweets uh, presently. But le let me just uh, uh, ask uh, Dr. Otavo before we go into the tweets, because the tweets are quite many. Tell us the difference, if any, between a cure for cancer and a treatment of cancer. And then why is it that in some cases when uh, a patient has been treated or said to have been cured, there is said to be uh, some relapse and then, you know, you decide to begin to uh, get malignant all over? Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of cancer treatment, we talk in terms of the number of years of survivor. We talk in terms of five years survivor, ten years survivor. After that, we can say that the patient has been cured. You know, it, it's uh, m many of our patients mm. in, in this part of the world, they don't do one year after diagnosis because by the time they are coming, in fact, it's the symptoms of metastasis that bring them. And at that point, it's difficult to do one year. But those who have been found, who were caught early and uh, the treatment, the right treatment modality is given, which is remove the cancer burden treats any possible local spread, then you wait for them for five years, and then look also 10 years. After 10 years, if nothing happens, you can say that that patient has attained care. <laughs> Dr. Ademu, your, your, your take also on care and treatment so and relapse. So, yeah, so first of all, in terms of relapse, I'll tackle the last question first. Unfortunately, any patient who has developed a cancer is always at risk of having a relapse which is also what we call a recurrence but proper treatments can lead to a cure which will and if a cure is achieved then obviously there will be no relapse and the proper treatment for cancers are a combination of depending on the cancer would be a combination of surgery perhaps radiation if indicated and systemic therapies with chemotherapy or some special medications depending on the kind of cancer so those treatments can lead to a cure and prevent a relapse. But every patient with a cancer is at risk for a relapse. And again, it depends on the stage of presentation. For instance, patients who have very early stage breast, breast cancer, stage one breast cancer, have a cure rate of about 98%, meaning that about only two out of 100 of them would relapse over five years, which is essentially most of them. Are. Whereas if patients present with more advanced disease, perhaps stage three, only about 65% of them are cured meaning that 35 of them, unfortunately, will have a relapse even after full treatment. Well, well for, uh, let's uh, still pursue something I know for most mothers will want to talk about, but that will be after we're done with the uh, tweets that uh, our viewers have sent in. Is the issue of people saying, if you breastfeed your children long enough, mm -hmm. they might not uh, fall under that risk. We'll find out from you more after. Okay, from uh, Thomas um, Bagmo, who says, uh, the government should make breast cancer tests 
uh, free in order to aid early detection and cure campaign should be taken to rural areas. Dele Jack Solomon. So the problem of breast cancer in Africa and Nigeria in particular is compounded by the lack of standardized diagnostic and treatment programs and that many women delay seeking treatment for symptoms with a large proportion of the diagnosed cancer being those that are not amenable to treatment. Hassan Labaran says uh, once it has been acknowledged that it is a deadly disease, government should try as much as possible to get drugs that can stop its growth. Among Balahun Babs tweet, it appears to the average Nigerian that we are only paying lip service to this deadly disease. Look at the cancer center along the airport road in Abuja launched by Mrs. Toure Yaradwa. Our government needs to do more in the area of advocacy, sensitization of the public, as well as providing access to treatment of cancer by the vulnerable in the society. They are often largely at the receiving end. Uh, Sunny Michael Makovaji uh, said, Dr. Bisi, why is it that uh, breast cancer is more common in Africa yeah. compared to Europe and the rest of the world? Is it traceable yeah. to the kind of food a woman eats or is it a uh, hereditary kind of sickness? And again, how can it be detected at the early stage? Well, we've taken time to answer some questions. First, Akimbo Yawa twist. There should be a screening program in Nigeria where all women age 50 plus will be screened every three years. Early detection and diagnosis can reduce the number of breast cancer deaths. Chris Simeon says uh, breast cancer occurs as a result of poor hygienic condition. Women are still putting money on their breast cover uh, as it's covered with the uh, breast hair. <laughs> it's very bad and it causes breast cancer. Health personnel should enlighten them. Uh, Habila, sorry, uh, Dr. Uh, Ademo, you, uh, you, I'm sure you, you understand Take what he's talking about. Uh, when you just go to the market, you just bring the this. <laughs> So is that exactly the cause of breast cancer? <laughs> no, there's no evidence that that causes breast cancer. Okay, so there's no evidence. That's to uh, Chris Simeon. There's no evidence. Of course, it's all hygienic, and right. I'm sure that these right. days they have many more wallets uh, in their possession. Habila Kwara Zakshi. Breast cancer is truly a deadly disease. Please, I want to know whether there is a total cure for breast cancer. If there is, how affordable is it to the average Nigerian? The two doctors here have already spoken to that issue. Mm. Yes. Many uh, first as Akimbo Yawa tweets, uh, many women don't have enough knowledge about cancer. Governments and NGOs should intensify breast cancer campaigns across Nigeria. Lawal Olaya Abiodun tweets, breast cancer has killed many because of the high cost of treatment. Government should do something to bring down the costs of treatment. Chris Simeon again tweets, the best management of breast cancer according to experts is by Yes, this in is. In fact, we are supposed yeah, to have read this. Well, I should, I should mm. take it. I should yes. take it. That Chris Simeon uh, is saying that the best, tweeting here that the best management of breast cancer, according to the experts, is by sucking. Uh, and again, this also has been circulated in the social media mm -hmm. recently that uh, when when we probably have young viewers uh, at this time of, of day, but uh, let's let's take it a bit more seriously that. Uh, to the extent that the breast is fondled more regularly, uh, a woman uh, undertakes uh, breastfeeding for, for her babies and then of course in uh, uh, amorous situations that this could uh, tend to uh, deal with the lumps before they grow. What's your, what, what is your thought on this? Well, there's no evidence that, you know, fondling for in during amorous situations can decrease the incidence of breast cancer, but he is correct about breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is actually protective against a certain form of breast cancer. So there's a, a certain form of breast cancer that's called triple negative breast cancer that's extremely aggressive and deadly and unfortunately preferentially affects younger black women. And what studies have shown is that breastfeeding can actually decrease the incidence of that aggressive triple negative breast cancer as well as reducing obesity. So that is correct. Mm. All right, That's Dr. Good. Dr. Otabo, what, what, what do you find in your clinic, you know, with regard to any linkage between uh, you know, breastfeeding or fund, regular fondling and a lower incidence of cancer, breast cancer? Well, it, it does, it's not a clinic affair. It's just um, an assumption. Uh, what Dr. Bisi has said is what is documented as correct, which is that uh, statistics have shown that women who breastfeed their children uh, have reduced risk mm. of developing mm. breast cancer mm. but the adult type of because the in the process of breastfeeding there are hormonal interplays 
that reduces the effect of estrogen on the breast. Mm. So, but the the adult one that's not baby sucking, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, w w well, Doctor Taba, uh, yeah. earlier you, you were talking about the uh, uh, crowded program for Doctor Ademo Yewa. You talked also about uh, the plant consultation that that you'll be holding now. Who can have access to the plant consultation? Give us uh, some information, for, especially for the benefit of the members of the public. Okay. Um, from here, we're going to Agora Hotel to have a public lecture, and the public is invited. Women will be have the opportunity to ask questions as they wish. After that lecture, uh, she will proceed to Alliance Hospital, where a free consultation has been uh, slotted for, uh, for women who have breast cancers those who think they have breast cancer or who have and um, you know she's just she's going to be there with two other um, medical oncologists to, for the consultation it's free but there's a maximum number of 40 people that she can see today so if uh, people have concerns about their uh, breast or breast cancer condition they are free to come but once it is once we hit the 40 mark there are a few people who are, who are already aware because we we spread the news on the social media. There are a few people who have indicated interest. So slot is even less than yes. forty now. Yes, yeah, less than forty, but she will take a maximum of forty people because she's she will be out mm -hmm. of town uh, maybe from yes, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. next. Uh, yeah. all, all right. It's on that note, of mm -hmm. course, we would like to uh, appreciate our two guests who have been with us this morning, Doctor. Uh, uh, Dr. B.C. Uh, Ademo, we would like to, uh, before we sign it off, uh, let's get to your, your take on uh, the free consultation you'll be having today. What is it that uh, potential visitors you know, should uh, expect? So, you know, I would, you know, ask them about their history, about what, you know, they think is going on, you know, potentially do a breast examination and sort of advise them on, you know, how they can access medical care, what kinds of treatments would be best for them, depending on their presentation and how far they have gone in the diagnostic process. And for those women who don't um, have breast cancer, you know, I can teach them some tricks of how to lower their risk of developing breast cancer and, you know, how to check their bodies and kind of be aware of things. All right, uh, Dr. Bisi Ademoyewa, yeah. Breast Medical Oncologist and Associate Professor at the Division of Oncology, Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I would like to thank you for being on Good Morning Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. It's been uh, a pleasure. Please, can I just mention yes, the, uh, the address Tabo? of the yes. hospital? The hospital is uh, 5 Malunfashi close off Emeka Yanku Street. It's important because they need to be able to find their way there. Okay. And for some patients who have already seen the doctor and they, they are vacillating, not knowing exactly what decision to take, Dr. BC will be of help to them. All right, uh, Dr. Uh, Chris Otabo, CEO of Alliance, Hos Alliance Hospital, uh, right here in Area 11, Garki, uh, Abuja. I would like to thank you for your contribution to our discussion this morning. Thank you. All right, so it's still Good Morning Nigeria, reaching you on Africa's largest television network. We'll take a short break. Now, when we return, we're taking a look at the latest abduction in Dapchi, Yobe State.